Hey guys, Justin Michael here, and um, today we're going to talk about the Ghosts and Spirits Tarot by Lisa Hunt. Um, this is a deck that's been around for a while, um, at least since 2011, um, and uh, it's not the most popular deck. I mean, I, I'm sure when it first came out there was a lot about it, but uh, since it's an older deck, I haven't heard really much about it. Um, but it, it has four out of five stars um, on Amazon. Uh, so it's kind of like a hit or miss deck, you know, some people love it, some people hate it, or, you know, maybe some people are in between about it, but, um, I guess that's every tower deck, but this just doesn't have, like, the greatest reviews, and, uh, for a Lisa Hunt deck, because she's brilliant, and I really like this deck, I like it because I'm into the, the whole idea of it, you know, the ghosts and spirits thing, and, um, I love, you know, she grew up in New England, so I'm not far from there. And, uh, you know, I kind of relate to her story about the deck and everything and her fascination with uh, spirits. But uh, one really cool thing about this deck is that I actually own a piece of original art from the deck. This is the original watercolor painting that Lisa Hunt drew uh, this on. And so I was able to find this uh, online and it comes with a certificate of authenticity. And it also comes with a card, but you know, a signed card. I'm just really happy I was able to find this because it's the only, you know, out of all the images in the deck, this is the only one I would have really, you know, purchased uh, the original for. I just feel very lucky and I just, I think I came across it at the right time. Um, but uh, I'm a big fan of Lisa Hunt, you know. Um, I would totally buy uh, some more uh, original artworks from her. Okay, so here we have the Ghosts and Spirits Tarot by Lisa Hunt, published by U.S. Games in the year 2011. And, of course, it comes in this, you know, flip-top box. These are the card backs. It's three ghosts. Now, the, the concept of this, uh, she, her growing up in New England. I grew up in a small New England town where 18th century houses stood against the backdrop of thick, Decadish trees. I played in those woods and never doubted that they possessed supernatural energy. I believed in all manner of spirits and saw faces in the trees and little people hidden in the garden. I believed the ghosts did, in fact, roam the streets of my historic town. A sensitive child, I picked up on energies that were part of my surroundings and transcribed my fantasies on the paper. It brought to physical life what my intuition already knew about the spirit world. Why are we fascinated with ghosts and spirits? If they aren't real, then why do they persist in our consciousness? Ghost stories and tales of the supernatural can be found around the world in many cultures. Uh, still propiate spirits as part of their belief system. The possibility that somehow our essence continues even when our bodies do not is comp a compelling idea. Ghost lore has been the subject of fascination since ancient times. Our attitudes about how we reconcile life and death, honor the dead, and prepare for the afterlife are steeped in tradition. There are, there are cultures that convene with the spirit world as a means of assuring abundance for the living. Many types of ghosts appear in various guises throughout the world. They may manifest during different phases of transition between the land of the living and the land of the dead. Ghosts and Spirits Tarot includes ghosts and spirits from legend and lore. Plucked from many sources, they represent an array of ethereal beings found around the world. Some are friendly, while others are downright terrifying. But all are part of an anthropological landscape and a relevant aspect of our humanity. The deck has standard 22 majors and 56 minor cards. Each card is accompanied by a brief synopsis, synopsis along with divinatory meaning and symbols. The descriptions are brief summations based on research and my own particular input. I have also included a special bonus card for uh, questions that require deeper reflection. Let the ghosts and spirits talk to you and help you dissolve the barriers between conscious constraint and objective inner reflection. Ghosts and spirits often are often messengers trying to tell us something and it is my hope that the ghost and spirit tarot 
provide a conduit for further communication and understanding we saw it. Uh, this is the extra card she's speaking of and we were just talking about extra cards when um, well in my last video uh, about uh, Atea or Atella I call him Atella I hear people pronounce him Atea but um, you know he had the Atella card you know so but uh, anyway I thought this was really cool and I really just like this deck a lot I know some some people don't like it, but for me, it just uh, for the reason she mentioned, you know, and it's like you know the archetypal kind of stories about spirits in different cultures. I love, and her um, she has the um, fantastical creatures tarot, which is in that realm, sort of. Um, so this is a so that's the fool, and that's Leshy, um, you know, wood spirit. Spirits inhabiting the dark forests of the Baltics. These shapeshifters can assume many guises and range in um, temperament from malevolent to mischievous. They are elusive and difficult to detect, but can lead the unwary traveler astray with their ability to mimic sounds. Entering a forest can be analogous to entering the unknown terrain of the unconscious. The tangle of branches indicates the challenges that lay ahead. The faces in the rocks illustrate the gamut of emotion with life lessons that await us. The dog is aware of the supernatural presence and serves as an intuitive guide for the carefree individual. Oh. And then this here, I'm not going to read every single description, obviously, but uh, you know, this is a psycho. This is the magician, and it's a psychopomp. And psychopomps assist those transitioning between death and the afterlife. All right. And then we have the High Priestess, which is the which is Sybil, the enchant the enchantress en enchantress hyphen Sybil, okay, and she's the most famous oracle of Greek, like Greco-Roman legend, okay. The Sybil of Cumae, Italy, guided um, Aeneas, I think it is, or Aeneas. Through the land of the dead and enabled him to return to the living. So. And then we have the Empress here, which is the uh, guardian spirit. And, uh, you know, a lot of great earthly Empress type colors in there. This is what I love about Lisa Hunt, you know, just her art is just beautiful. And it's very emotional and very intuitive and. You know, I just love the colors in there. It just really um, communicates that Empress uh, energy. And so the Empress is the Guardian Spirit. A Guardian Spirit is a benevolent presence whose mission is one of protection and guidance. And then this is the Emperor. It's the... Um, um, this is the Dragon Ghost God. Okay, Dragon Ghost God. Ancient Hawaiians referred to dragon ghost gods as Mo'o. Mo'o or Mo'o. These mythical water-dwelling creatures were thought to possess great powers and shape-shifting abilities. And this here is the uh, it's the Hierophant, and in this deck called the High Priest. And um, this is an apparition. And apparitions are usually ghosts of the dead who manifest to convey a message. They typically appear through limited visual perception and are often heard or sensed and not seen. Some are deceased souls who briefly visit friends and relatives while others may haunt particular individuals. Sorry, that was an amber alert. <laughs> I got an amber alert, but you get that uh, thing these days. Oof. Makes your hair stand up. That was creepy. Okay. Um, everybody's on edge. <laughs> uh, the Lovers is... I hope you can see that. It's, the deck is a little on the dark side, but, you know, you just really have to look in there. These would look great, much bigger. You know, that, that, that's one shortcoming of this deck. And by the way, I didn't mention really the card quality. The card quality is, you know, typical U.S. games, a little on the thin side. Um, 
and they have these nice ghost card backs and they feel all right i mean but i would prefer that they were a little bit bigger they should redo this deck so that you can actually see the art because the artwork is really nice it's just uh small it's a little small and hard to uh pick up so this is the specter specter bridegroom specter bridegroom stories present a spectrum of emotions concerning relationships desire betrayal devotion passion loss and grief when betrothed lovers are separated circumstances change and the dynamic shifts joyful reunions dissolve into tragedy and real identity of lover turned ghost is uh, discovered then you have the chariot here which is um, the wild hunt that's what it's called the wild hunt in darkness of night a terrifying hell rips through a storm laden sky a savage phantom army of hideous horses and wild dogs hunt down the damned and carry bad omens for those who dare to spy hmm. and then the strength card is the mummy or ka ancient egyptians believed that each person is born with a spirit spiritual double that lived detached from the body and served as the life force. The deceased would join Ka for eternity. Ka would wander at night in search of a place to live and food to eat in the afterlife. If Ka were neglected, it would return to haunt the living. Therefore, Egyptians preserved the body through mummification and left offerings of food for sustenance. Okay. Here is the hermit. Okay, this is Dryads. So again, let me just get a little closer look here. Okay, Wheel of Fortune, Hungry Ghosts. Hungry Ghosts from Hindu tradition are condemned to wander the earth until good karma is restored. Their punishment reflects the sins incurred to, uh, in order to restore uh, balance in the karmic wheel. Okay, so card 11 is Justice. Japanese snow ghost whirls through the snow and appears to mortals as ethereal spirits of the cold. Her icy touch could spell death for the fatigued traveler. <clears throat> Twelve is Hangman. So the Hangman is the undead, or the vampire, the restless deceased rise and wanderer of the earth. You all know what a vampire is, so. And card 13 is Death, the Grim Reaper. Uh, perhaps the most famous symbol of death is the Grim Reaper, a portentous figure that surfaced into cultural consciousness around the time of the Black Plague. Huh, how relevant today. Um, 14 would be Temperance. And this is the Swan Maiden. Swan Maidens possess the ability to shapeshift into humans by shedding their feathers. Mortal men seeking their affections would confiscate their feathers and domesticate the captive maidens and here is uh, chains Jacob Marley in A Christmas Carol Jacob Marley was Ebenezer Scrooge's business partner and only friend on Christmas Eve the anniversary of Marley's death his ghost paid Scrooge an unexpected visit the ghost chains cash box and padlocks encumbered his spirits and served as a reminder of his material driven life. Marley comes to his uh, paras parasmonious partner as a symbol of the potential dreadful fate, telling him to expect three spirit encounters. Okay, so we all know that. And um, so that is uh, card 15. And. Um, you all obviously know that that is the uh, devil card. That's 15, Jacob Marley. So. 16 is the tower. And uh, the fall of the house of Usher, an Edgar Allan Poe's horror story. Uh, sympathetic friend visits uh, Roderick, Usher, who is suffering from a mental disorder. Usher's twin sister, Madeline, wanders about in a trance-like state. state. Usher tells his friend that she has died, so together they place her in a vault. During a violent storm, a crash is heard below, and a door flies open, revealing the ghastly sight of her bloody sister. She, she collapses 
on her panic-stricken brother who dies under the weight of the fear. So, we, I don't really, I'm not familiar with that story, but look into that. The star is car 17 and um, <clears throat> it's cloud people or Shawana. The, the, the Pueblos, the uh, Pueblo Indian, believed that everything was animated by a life force. It was thought that the deceased joined the other real beings in otherworldly domain up in the sky. Ceremonial dances were performed to invoke the spirits of the cloud people or Shawana. A group of supernatural spirits who brought rains. The weather spirits respond to call for rain. Magical NIMBY reflect their radiance in carrying nourishing rains accompany their journey through the sky. Souls can be seen swirling around them, connecting conscious desires with unconscious dreams. Interesting. Here's the moon. Okay, and the moon is uh, Anus's journey to the uh, underworld. Huh. A prophetic dream sent Anus to the underworld in search of his father. The journey is filled with the with both hope and horror as he bears witness to the suffering of the punished as well as the blissful afterlife of the rewarded. He also eventually finds his dead father Anchises. I, I'm not familiar with these with these uh, myths. Um, who reveals Anus's father as found of, founder of Rome. Yeah, these are Roman, not Greek. I'm more familiar with the Greek ones. but uh, The underworld is symbolic of the unconscious and uh, houses both our greatest dreams and our biggest fears. So, you know, that sort of like the unconscious so that's the moon um, 19 is the sun um, the grateful dead uh, we're not talking about the band and Jerry Garcia here uh, in tales of the grateful dead the good-hearted hero pays a dead man's debt and then befriends a stranger on his journey after bringing a pattern of good fortune the stranger discloses his true identity is the dead man the hero had kindly helped. Everything has come together in a confluence of joyful exuberance. And we got judgment. It is judgment of the dead. In ancient Egypt, the souls of the newly deceased were led to the hall of two truths. And then finally we have the world, which is um, La Dance Macabre which is uh, Dance of the Dead. It's an allegory of death as the great equalizer, reminding people that death does not play favorites. That's for sure. It is what brings humanity together, regardless of status and creed. Like, I, you know, I love that uh, image of the uh, two severed heads on the death card in that um, uh, Tar Tarogo Bizarro, the Italian one. With the king's head and the peasant's head, you know, and that, that's exactly what, you know, we're talking about with death, you know, it's the great equalizer, we're all mortal, and that should play an important part in the meaning to the divinatory meaning of the, of the card. So this is a fully illustrated Rider Waite Smith style deck, um, but it's, it's very different, you know. Um, so this is King of Wands, Herney the Hunter. I'm not going to tell you every single one, but these are all sort of treated as if they're like majors, you know? Well, at least the um, the core cards are, you know? And then we got, uh, let's see, Queen of Wands is White Ladies. Knight of Wands, Haiku. We have the Page of Wands is... Uh, Sherry. In Native American tradition, the ghost of a girl known as a Cheery descended from the mountains and carried death to the valley below. And we have the Ace. Ace of Wands. Let's see what she did with this. Ace of Wands is also referred to uh, as Fool's Fire. These anomalous anomalous 
flickers usually appear after sundown over remote marshy areas. Will the wisp? Yeah, I've heard of that. Hmm. And then we have two of wands, which is doppelganger. Translates literally from the German to mean double walker, as one's double. The appearance of ghostly twin can presage ill tidings or death. Hmm. And then three of wands. Uh, Fairbrow. <clears throat> uh, Italian fairy tale, a young man named Fairbrow paid the debts of dead to assure a proper burial. And the four of wands. Although innocuous, the mischievous water spirit enjoyed playing pranks on unsuspecting travelers. In one Scottish tale, Shelley Coat cried out, Lost, lost, in such a, a doleful tone that two men near a riverbank thought someone was drowning. After exhaustive search, the men realized they had been duped. A Shelley Coat. And then we got the five of wands here. Which is the ghost of Iwa? Or Oiwa? There was a man named Lemon, whose lust for another drove him to poison his wife. Oiwa, or Owo, Oia, who had just given birth to their son. After her death, Lemon returned to his selfish desires and intended to marry his paramour. But the vengeful spirit of Oa followed him everywhere and soon appeared on the face of his new bride. Lemon impulsively took his sword and beheaded the ghoulish figure. Before realizing his grave mistake, there lie the head of his new bride and not that of the ghost of Oa. So that's pretty cool too because that's like a Japanese uh, kind of uh, fable or, or tale and uh, so it's not just like Anglo stuff you know or European is kind of cool and uh, we have the six of wands here <clears throat> Valhalla we all know Valhalla uh, six of wands what does that have to do with the number six though I'm just wondering fallen Vikings heroes were retrieved from battlefields and carried by Valkyries to the great halls of Valhalla for glorious combat and feasts the warriors were served by luminous Valkyries who listen okay let's see what the divinatory means a, tr a triumphant period follows good news. You will be rewarded for your hard work, courage, and determination. Okay, so you have like that uh, harmony there of the number six and wands. And so I'm just going to flip through the rest of these. I think I've taken up enough of your time telling you which is which. But the art is really cool, and you can just get lost in it. Um, I wish this deck was a little bigger. You know, I wish that we could have a I, I think that that's why this deck wasn't as popular as it could be. You know, if it was just a little bit bigger and a little brighter, you know, a little... Just a little brighter and bigger, I think that it would be... But, you know, this is the tone that it kind of went with. Like, the, the looking at the original art, you know, it's uh, it's watercolor and it's, uh, it's like very... Um, like, it's got that kind of... I don't want to say dull, but it's just not really bright because it's a watercolor, you know. But it's a dark kind of themed deck, so you know a lot of times with watercolors we use bright colors. Uh, and I'm not an art person, but um, yeah, I'm just more of a person who appreciates art. But the brighter colors make it appear more bright. So this is darker colors, obviously, because of the theme. It's pretty dark, so. Someone mentioned that. Um, this would be a good deck for ancestral work. I don't do that type of things with tarot, but um, I mean, I guess I could. I should try that. I was working with the Anse the um, Celtic ancestors uh, deck by Caitlin Matthews, but. But the art is really just stunning in this. I love it. You know, you get lost in it. 
she's really a talented artist, and I'm just so glad I got that uh, original. I keep that forever. That's it. So uh, you can. This is still available on Amazon. Um, I really like this deck. Like I said, I just wish it was printed on bigger. You know, I feel like it would be. It would be a nice like um, deluxe size deck with like almost no borders or I don't know if they could do borderless, but something close to borderless. Just a little bigger, so you can appreciate the artwork. And uh, I love Lisa Hunt. Uh, I love her fairy tale tarot. I wish I could get a copy of it. Um, the only uh, thing that's available now is the uh, Spanish version, but hopefully they'll do a re. Uh, you know, U.S. Games will print it again. Anyway, I appreciate you guys tuning in, and uh, everybody stay safe and hang in there. This is a very uh, stressful time for everybody in the in the world, so we're all kind of going through this together. And uh, we'll beat this thing. So just hang tough and have some faith. And uh, I guess until next time, bye-bye.